Hello, Lawrence Grayson here again for shortformvideo.com and today's After Effects tutorial is this, um, what looks like a um, helicopter view, night vision style fly through of a cityscape. Um, it's really, really simple to put together, um, but once again, you will need a third party plugin and this time another trap code plugin called Form. So if you don't already have it, um, feel free to go to redgiantsoftware.com and download the demo so you can follow along with this project. So the first thing we actually want to do is uh, create some terrain. So we'll create a new composition and we'll call it Terrain Flyover. Make it 640 by 360 at 25 frames per second and 20 seconds long and we'll OK that. Next thing we need to do is create a new solid. Um, Normally we'd go for make it composition size, but uh, this is actually an exceptional case. We're actually going to make it 3,000 pixels tall, and we'll call it Fractal Terrain, and hit OK. So you can probably guess where I'm going with this. In your Effects and Presets panel, type in Fractal and find your Fractal Noise effect. Drag it onto the new layer, and that gives us this kind of cloudy effect. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll out so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, first step is to hit P to bring up the position values, create a keyframe at the beginning, and then line up the bottom of the um, fractal terrain layer with the bottom of your composition. Now, once you've started dragging, keep your finger down on Shift to make sure it stays in the right line. And that'll actually stop you from dragging it left and right, it means you can only drag it up and down, which is pretty handy. Um, so once that's roughly in place, scroll to the end of your project, create another keyframe, and then drag your layer so the top is lined up with the top. Okay, I'll scroll back in, and you can see that what that gives us is a flyover effect. Okay, go back to our project panel, right-click and select New Composition, and we'll call this Terrain Scanner. Again usual comp size 20 seconds long and we'll drag our terrain flyover into our new composition next thing to do create a new solid make sure it's the comp size and we'll call this form scanner in the effects and presets panel type in form drag the form plugin onto your form scanner layer and you'll get this now, obviously, once again, the default settings aren't what we're after, so we just need to play around with the base form setting. Uh, so twirl that down. We'll leave it at box and grid, because that's exactly what we want. But we want to match the X and Y dimensions to the project dimensions we already have. So that's 640 pixels and 360 pixels. We don't actually want any um, Z depth, so we'll leave that at 1. Um, we want half as many particles as we have pixels, so that'll be... 320 pixels, uh, sorry, 320 particles in the x axis, 180 particles in the y axis, and one particle in the z axis. But uh, if I scroll in, you can see that gives us um, a nice even grid of dots. Now, the next thing I'll do is I'll just uh, cant this forward a little bit so you can see what happens next. So change the x rotation value to about minus 45. Okay. And I'll just hide the uh, terrain flyover because we won't actually be seeing it in the finished project. Okay, now th this is where the funky stuff happens. Scroll down the um, the form plugin um, effect settings and find layer maps. Twill down displacement and select individual X, Y, Z and map over X and Y. Now in the layer for Z select your terrain flyover layer and it's created a rather funky mountainous terrain setting um, using the brightness and darkness values of the uh, terrain flyover map that we created earlier but that's not quite what we're after um, so we need to play around with the uh, the terrain map that we created earlier so let's go back to the terrain flyover select the fractal terrain layer and have a bit of a play with the fractal noise settings we need to select basic, uh, turbulent basic, and block from noise type. And you can see it changes the cloud-like uh, formation into something a little bit more like squares. Um, 
want to turn the contrast right up to 200% and take the brightness down to minus 100 and the complexity down to 2. And there you go. I think you can see where we're going with this. So if we actually go back to our terrain scanner composition, you can see that we've made some significant changes. The one problem we've got here is they're all upside down. So if we click on the form scanner layer and scroll down back to our displacement map, change the strength from 50 to minus 50. But uh, we want to do a couple, couple more things with it. So uh, sticking with the form plugin for now, go to quit maps and twill down the color map. And we can select the green one, which is a uh, nice light green to dark green. I'll double click on this marker here just to change it to black. I'll just uh, close them up a little bit and map it to the Z axis. Next thing we need to do is add a little bit of noise. So I'll type in noise in the effects and presets panel and we'll pick the noise alpha plugin and drag it onto the form scanner layer. Now we're going to ramp up the, uh, the noise amount by 200% and we'll actually turn the um, original alpha into add and what that does is it breaks up all the lines and actually makes the uh, the objects a little bit more solid gives it that uh, less of a grid line look and more of an, um, a solid landscape look and obviously if you look closely you can see that it's not um, but that's close enough for our needs okay next step create a new solid and we'll call this one vignette Pick the ellipse tool and create a new mask just by dragging and dropping. We'll invert it. So uh, take it from add to subtract. Roll down the mask properties and just adjust the feathering to add a nice bit of vignette to the edges. Okay, so uh, that's looking a lot better. Just a couple more things to do. So one more solid, create a new solid, and we'll call this grid lines. From your effects and presets, select grid, and drag that onto the grid lines layer. You can see that's uh, rather ghastly for now. Um, change the uh, size from uh, width and height sliders. Change the width value to something massive like 4000, just to get the vertical bars out of the way and we'll just um, click the anchor point and drag it over here somewhere to just get that final vertical bar out of the way. Increase the, um, the number of lines by reducing the height slider to about, I don't know, 12, looks good. Drop the border to three and change the color to black. Actually, I think we could probably get a few more lines in there just to make it look a little bit more broken up. Okay, so we're down to a height value of six. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. But the one thing I haven't done is given it any sense of motion. And that will work if you just want a static view. But one of the great things you can do with the, uh, the form scanner, if you go back to form, is actually adjust the rotation values as I did earlier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from probably about 20 degrees at the beginning. I'll just add a X and Y rotation keyframe right at the beginning. And I'll tilt it on the Y axis to about, I don't know, minus 25. And then head to the end, tilt it back to plus 25. And then about halfway in, I'll change the X rotation to something even more shallow. Great, you're ready to render. Um, thanks for watching and uh, check out my website, shortformvideo.com for more tutorials as and when I add them. Thanks again.